Hi, this is Shad Sluter, and we're going to look through some of the homework assignments for class number uh, 215, Computer Logic and Design. And so we have ourselves an assignment that is going to ask us to print a table. So you can see that I have the idle Python environment up on the screen, and I've copied in some of the instructions here, and what the output is supposed to look like when we're done. The instructions say that we're going to be given a list of lists and so it's basically a matrix. Each item in the list is a sublist. The first item in the sublist is the titles of our table and then the second, third, fourth, and fifth and so on are going to be just lists of true false items. So our goal is to make a program that can take this long line and turn it into a formatted table. So I'm going to show you a partial solution. This will get you part way and then I'm going to ask you to finish it off to make it more accurate. First of all let's start by creating a definition or a subroutine and I'm going to call this thing draw a table and inside of there we're going to get a list of items. I'm going to call that list uh, the table. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a header row and then later on we're going to do each row so the header row will include the titles like X, Y, and X and Y. Later on, we're going to create a set of data. So I'm going to copy this line here that shows all of the data. Let's see if we can get that down here. So our table will look like that. And then we're going to call our function. And so I'm just going to say print um, draw table of our table. So now we're going to fill in the blanks with some logic and some routines to make this happen. The first thing I want to do is be able to create the header line. And so I'm going to start by creating a string. I'm going to build on this string and then finally print it. So my string I'll name is output and we'll call it a blank string. So now I'm going to say we're going to make a loop. So for item in table and the first item in the table is item 0 and so what we're going to focus on is just this section right here the first item in the table is the whole list that shows the headers now for each of those we're going to print them so I'm going to take the output line here and I'm going to add on to it so adding on to a variable is the plus equals. That's the same thing as saying output equals output plus something. But a shortcut way to write that is plus equals. Now for this output item I'm just going to add each item in my list and attach it to this string. So I'm going to say output plus equals and the string value of item. Finally after I've glued all these items together I'm going to return a item. So let's say return the output and so then when it returns it it will come back down to here and be printed. So let's save our work. You're probably going to have to name your file. You can see I've already got a long name in mine. Let's go to run module and you can see that when I print I get X, Y and X and Y. Now let's add a few more things in here. So we're trying to do a table so I'm going to insert a space right here in this line that adds the output. So let's run that and see what kind of changes we get. And so you can see now that the items are separated by spaces. Well, since we're trying to do a table, I'm going to put in the pipe command. So that's your shift and the key right above enter on your keyboard. And so that'll give us little columns. And let's see what that does. So now we have some kind of a formatted table. Looks to me like a space afterwards would be good. So I'll add a space as well. So little by little you can format your table until you get exactly what you want. So next I need a divider line between my header and the rows. And so I'm going to add something to the output variable. So I'll add another plus equals. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to put a bunch of minus signs. I'm going to ask you to fix that later because it will be the wrong width, but it'll give us the idea. So I'm going to run this program, and you will find that it has a long dotted line in the output. However, I would like that on a new line. 
So let's uh, slip in a new line character, which happens to be the, uh, the backslash n, and save it and try it again. So you can see my output now shows two lines. Okay, so I'm going to remove this uh, return statement and put it down below the comments. After I have done my headers, it is now time to figure out how to print each row. So now I'm going to do a, a loop again, and I'm going to do the same idea, item, in table. So in the uh, loop, I want to loop through every item after item 0. So this will be item 0, this will become the first, this is number 2, this is number 3, and so we're counting starting with 0. So now I want to know the answer to this question. Is how do I loop through only part of the table? I uh, know how we can do one item in the table. I just put a number in there. But I want to just look from item 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And I'm going to ignore item 0. So I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to search for this question. How to loop through part of a list in Python. And it looks to me like Stack Overflow is going to lead us the way. And so we look here, and you can see that um, if we use this format, if we say 0 colon 2, that will only show us the first three items in the list, 0, 1, and 2. Uh, this one here says if we go from 2 colon nothing, or an empty space, that starts at the second item, or item 2, and goes all the way to the end. So I'm going to use something like that. I'm going to say I want to start at item number one and a colon and nothing after the colon, which means I'm going to search all the way to the end. Now after a for loop, you need to start with a colon again. And let's see what happens if I just try printing the uh, word item. What does that do for me? So let's run our program and check it out. So you can see from the output what's going on. The first thing that was printed was false, false, false. And so that is item number one in the list. And then item two in the list is the next group of booleans, and then so on. So you can see that this is almost what we want. But instead of just printing each item in the list, we want to print a T or an F. So we're going to have to have another loop. So let's call this for uh, boolean. Uh, let's see if we can use, yeah, we can use the word boolean in the uh, item. So that means we're going to not just search through each chunk of items, but now we're going to loop through these three. And let's print that and see what happens. Print uh, Boolean. And let's run the program and see if that makes any difference. I forgot the parentheses, so let's put the parentheses around the word Boolean. Notice I can't use the word bool, but I can use Boolean. Bool is a reserved word. So I am getting the list of false, trues, and everything. So it's printing the items one by one. We're moving a little closer to what we want. So now for each of these items that I'm looking at, I'm going to loop through the values inside here. So for each Boolean item inside item, we're going to uh, add on to our output. So if I said uh, if Boolean equals true, then I want to make sure that I add on the letter T. So I'm going to go back to my output um, string and I'm going to add on to it a letter T. And if it is not a true, then it must be a false. So we will say we'll add on an F. Go ahead and run that and let's see what happens. And we will test out our theory on whether it can loop through these guys. Okay, so now we're getting a bunch of letters. We need to split these up onto new lines, it looks like. So the first thing we're going to do when we go through an item is we're going to add the new line character. So I'm going to try that one. And that'll add a new line after we run through that part of the loop. There we go. So now we're getting three Fs which corresponds to our three falses in this list. Now all we have to do is add a few more characters in there. So for instance, let's, let's add a uh, pipe symbol and a T and a pipe symbol, maybe a space afterwards. Let's test that, see if it looks any better. 
Yeah, it looks like it. We've got ourselves a table looking thing. So now the formatting is working fairly well. However, what would happen if I came down to my input data and on this line here I decided and instead of Y, I would, I would like to make a longer phrase. So I could say the opposite of X and Y and we're going to we're going to get this thing uh, quite a bit longer than it's just two characters so now if I save and run it you'll see that there's a problem in the formatting so the second column now spans about six characters and the columns below it are not spaced correctly so I'm going to leave that part of the problem to you you're going to have to figure out how to count the characters and then complete the uh, the table correctly also, the output line, I just set as a, some arbitrary string of 20 dashes. That should also be the length of the first line. So there's still a lot of work to do. You'll have to do some math and counting, but that will get you the basic head start that you might need for this program.